Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm in the spirit. I'm wearing red. So I always like to know um, my, who my audience is. So how many freshmen do we have in this crowd? Okay, a few fishies. Good. Sophomores? Okay. Yeah, I think fishies. I'm old school. Juniors? Seniors? Two, three, four. Four seniors. Okay, great. So show of hands, how many have been in this room have an internship already? One person? Okay. How many of you have a job? Keep your hands up high. Okay. How many of you that have a job, keep your hands up, it, it will lead to a career? Good. Great. Awesome. So those of you that don't have an opportunity for a career, because we all understand the difference between a job and a career, right? We all have jobs in college, we all have jobs in high school, but when we graduate, our goal is to find a career, a position that gives us the opportunity to grow and advance. So my goal today is to talk to you a little bit about our company, our culture, a little bit about who we are, and the opportunities that I currently have and that I'm currently hiring for. So again, my name is Sandy De La Garza. I welcome questions throughout my presentation. I will not feel offended if you interrupt me. Um, so please go right ahead. I like in, I, I like an interactive crowd, okay? So how many of you have heard of Enterprise Rent a Car? Majority of you. How many of you have heard of Enterprise Rent a Car, the career opportunities? Two of you. Great. So this is going to be kind of a refresher for you. What? NCA commercials. Okay. Yeah, NCA commercials, opportunities, absolutely. So we are a family owned and operated business. We are currently owned by the Taylor family today. Do you all understand the difference between being a private company and a public company? <coughs> you do, what's the difference? The private company has a majority of the interests uh, or shares of stocks and, and has one individual. A public company has their shares broken out across each uh, stock. Yes, I always get that answer. And yes, that's true. But also what's really cool about being a private company is that we don't have a board of directors that we need to report to, to ask permission, to open opportunities, to open stores, to give our employees an opportunity to grow in advance. So being a public company allows us to make whatever decisions we want, basically. We are the largest rental car company in the world. Currently we have a profit of $22.3 billion industry. We are the largest company that hired the most recent college grads. So why do you think that is? Why do you think Enterprise hires a lot of college graduates? Because we're what? Because <laughs> we, we're cheap. Yeah, you're right. No. Um, because we are, it, it's an entry level position. So basically what, we, what our founder thought, of, he, when he started the company, he came from the military. How many military people do we have here in this room? A few of you. So you understand the structure, right? We promote from within. And that's what he believes. He believes that you, in order for you to advance into the management role, you need to start from the bottom and you need to work your way up. Do we, are we cheap? No, we give you the opportunity to be in control, not just your career, but your income. We're a position, we're a company that we don't cap our employees, never see this is as far as you can make. We have an entry level starting salary and that is what it is. And I'll cover that with you guys later. Um, the one thing I will guarantee as a recruiter, I don't just hire people and try to sell them to come work for the company. I'm a very, very transparent person. I tell you exactly what you're going to expect. I share the good, the bad, and the ugly. I don't keep any secrets from you because at the end of the day, my goal is to retain you, not just to hire you, right? So if you want to know anything there is to know about the company, I'll be happy to share that with you. More than 9,900 locations. So can you guys guess in how many countries we're at today? We're in today? Guess. Give me a number. 10 countries. Anybody else? How many? 50. 50. Anybody else? 150. 150. What's that? <laughs> Not 150. Um, over 90 countries. So we're in over 90 countries year to date. How many countries are, are there in the, in the world? Does anybody know? No? Okay, well, we can, we can Google that later. So more than 90, 90 countries worldwide, here in the Houston market, so when I say Houston market, I talk about Beaumont, Katy, the Woodlands, Galveston. So in the Houston area, we have close to 200 locations. 
Uh, we are growing. We're growing 35% year to date here in the Houston area, including Beaumont, which again means more opportunity, more stores, more opportunity, because we all want opportunity, right? How many of you want to work for a position or a company that gives you the opportunity to grow? How many of you are okay just working for a job and just as long as you're happy and you're okay where you're at forever for the rest of your life? Good, nobody, in, well, you are. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, 2013, we hired, we hired the first non-family member to be the CEO, Pam Nicholson. This just means that there is hope for us all, okay? We promote from within and it is 100% based on performance. Okay, so the Taylor family started the company, still own the company today, but they don't just hire, they don't just recruit and hire their own people. It's all based on performance. So she is the first non-family member to hold the title of CEO company. CEO. So what is an MT? Manager training. So it is an entry level position. It's a career into management. So Basically, we're going to teach you all aspects of the business, from sales, marketing, how to manage and train and develop a team, how to learn how to manage your own business. How many of you in here would love to be an entrepreneur? <coughs> Four or five of you, a few of you. The rest of you want to work for somebody for the rest of your life, right? So we give you the opportunity to do both. You're basically going to learn how to run and manage your own business, and at the same time, you still get to work for somebody else, okay? So the great thing about this position, I was in your shoes at one point. I graduated with a degree in marketing. And I remember Enterprise being at a career fair and thinking, absolutely not, I will not work for a company where I rent cars. Do you think that's what we hire people to do? Yes. <laughs> Just teasing you. Yes, that is the front line of the business. That's exactly what we're hiring you to do. But do I require a college degree person to come in and to rent cars? Why do you need a degree to rent cars? Because that's not what I'm looking for, right? That's the front line of the business. Yes, that's what you're going to do. You're going to rent cars. But I'm looking for a business partner. I'm looking for somebody that's going to help us continue to grow and not only help yourself, but help the people around you and help our company. So I'm looking for somebody that's going to learn how to do all aspects of the business, not just rent cars, because that's the easy part. I can hire anybody to do that. But I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for somebody that has strong leadership skills, that's able to communicate well, that's able to be aggressive and sell, because there's a lot of sales involved in this position, and at the same time train and develop a team, because that comes with leadership skills, right? <coughs> Again, we promote 100% from within. And I don't know about you guys, but how many of you would be devastated working for a company five, 10 years in, and then they hire this random person that's been a CEO for a company, all of a sudden to come and manage you. How would you feel about that? What's that? Nothing you can do. Everybody. Nothing you can do, right? And a lot of companies nowadays really have that structure. There's really nothing you can do. That's, that's the way the business is because you could be that person that's gonna go in and manage others, that you have zero knowledge of what that person is doing, what that person has done, the work that they put in to get to where they're at, I am super proud to say that we only promote from within. It is 100% based on performance. I don't care who you know, if you want to start from the, with this company, since we started back in 1957, we've only promoted from within, okay? So what do we look for in students? Um, again, do we just hire students? Absolutely not. I will hire anybody from the outside who's been in the workforce for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I don't care. As long as you're okay starting entry level. The reason we hire a lot of recent college grads is because the majority of recent college grads are, are looking for entry level. They're looking for that opportunity that's going to give them the opportunity to grow in advance, right? And challenge them. Um, so that's one of the main reasons we look for a lot of recent college grads is because you're okay starting with entry level. But what we look for, one, I do require a bachelor's degree. It's 100% the minimum requirement to be even considered for the full-time management training program. Um, I look for your leadership abilities. So do you, are you involved in organizations? Are you working? How many in this room have a job? A lot of you raise your hand. Those of you that do not have a job, are you 100% involved in the university? Are you involved in organizations? Are you participating in any kind of um, community service event? Anything? Would you say that as a part-timer, as a college student and a part-timer, you're working, what, 20 hours a week? <coughs> so as a full-time college student, I would expect you to work at least 20 hours a week in some sort of organization. 
I understand a lot of us have responsibilities. We're parents. Um, maybe we're single parents and we, you know, school and that's all I can focus on right now. But I want you to be prepared to think about when you get into that interview, how are you going to sell yourself and make yourself seem more appealing than anybody else that you're competing against? What's going to set you apart? You're graduating. How many seniors do we have in here again? I saw like five. So how many people do you guys think you're graduating with? Six or seven hundred? Oh, that. In, in your class. Yeah. You don't know? Okay. So that's just Lamar, right? Think about all the other universities within Houston alone. That's your competition, right? So when you graduate, you have a degree. That's great. That doesn't get you a career. That doesn't get you a job. It's your experience. It's how you sell yourself in the interview that's going to set you apart from everybody else. So why not start building that today? And the way most of us can't work, and that's okay, but get involved. Be able to sell yourself and differentiate yourself from others by being able to talk about your leadership abilities. So student organizations, sports. Athletes can't work, and we get that. But there is a lot that comes from an athlete that are very, there's a lot of transferable skills that come from an athlete that can transition very well in a lot of industries. Enterprise is one of them. Management. Work experience. So now if you are a full-time student and you work full-time, those of you that have a job today, is that a job that has challenged you to be able to find success in the future? Or is it a job just to make money for now because you need cash? What kind of job do you have? What kind of job are you looking for? So if I'm looking for a position that's going to get me in front of people that I'm going to be able to sell, I'm not looking for a position that maybe in retail waiting tables, something that challenges me to be able to be approachable, sell, talk to others. But if I want a position that's going to help me find a position in accounting or in, um, I don't know, engineering, anything other than sales and management, are you looking for a job that will help you and able to transfer your, transition your skills that you've learned in that job into your career? So if I want to work in a position that's sales and customer service, I'm not going to go get a, a desk job. I'm not going to go be, work at a uh, behind the scenes as a secretary, as an assistant for somebody. No, I want to be able to work in a position that's going to challenge me and push me to move it, right? So that's what I encourage you guys to do. Those of you that are freshmen and sophomores, you're now looking about these jobs are not just jobs to make money for now. These jobs are opportunities for you to be able to sell yourself when you get in front of that employer or that company that you really want to work for. That's what you need to start thinking. Above all, above all, great attitude. If you are boring, if you're monotone, you have zero energy in the interview, you may not make it past that, especially with me. I look for fun, energetic people. I can teach you everything else. I look for the drive, the competitiveness, the ability to want to excel as an individual, right? Somebody who's extremely hungry, that's what I look for. Everything else, we can teach you. I can't teach that. Any questions on that? Intern. So how many of you are looking for an internship? Five of you? Nobody else wants an internship? And that's okay. So an internship is not something, a lot of people feel like I need an internship before I graduate. Is that true? Yes. So some of us think that way, right? But it's not. Again, what's going to set you apart from everybody else? Here's why you want an internship. You want an internship because it is a step into your career. So a lot of employers look for interns to be able to jumpstart their career. So I hire interns because I'm not looking for an intern to just come and work for me for the summer and then never see them again. I'm looking for an intern that's ready to start their career. And we give you that opportunity. So we have, a, we have a step program that you have to be able to advance to be able to see the next promotion. So the internship is really just a little step zone into your career with our company. So if you're looking for an internship, don't just look for an internship, look for your career. Look for the, that employer that is willing to take a chance on you as an intern for possibilities for more after that, right? So our internship program, is we're looking for rising seniors. So if you graduate um, August or December of 2018 or May of 2019, you qualify for my internship program, okay? Um, 
full time. It's a full time position, 49 hours a week. It is a paid internship program. It's $12 an hour plus overtime. So 49 hours a week is what you will be working. Plus up to $25 to $3,000 in bonuses at the end of the internship. And that's just in three months, okay? So the paid, the paid internship, what I look for, I'll explain it in a minute. Oh, actually, the exact same thing that I look for is basically this, but without the bachelor's degree. Okay? Any questions on my internship program? <coughs> Remember, right now I get to give you all the answers. No? Okay. So we all want to know the career path. We're curious to know, okay, what's in it for me? Yes? Are your internship locations in the Houston area, or are they like... Everywhere? Great question. So, uh, for my internship, it's everywhere. I have 200 stores. I have 200 opportunities. I don't, but I have. A, I'm looking for about 40 interns for the summer. Um, if I find 41 interns, I'm not going to not hire that 41. That person's amazing. So I look for the type of candidate. But here in Beaumont, I have about three or four internship spots open and ready, and I'm looking to hire the next person. So as an intern. So the internship position is not posted in the, on this career path. My internship is basically, again, it's a little stepping stone into your career. I'm going to describe the full-time management career path and kind of let you know more or less what your career will look like if you start with our company. So again, I graduated with a degree in marketing, started working for Enterprise. This April will be 10 years for me that I've been with the company. I was in the rental career path for four and a half years, and then I transitioned into talent acquisition. And that's what I've been doing for the last five years. So I've, been, I've had the privilege to come and talk to a lot of Lamar students for the last five years. Um, so, and I've hired a lot of Lamar students, by the way. Um, so starting off as a manager trainee, the entry level position, you said we pay cheap back there. The guys not paying attention to me. Okay, you said we're cheap, right? So entry level position. What do you guys feel entry level positions should be? What is the what is your starting expectation salary? Give me numbers. Forty thousand. Anybody else? Yearly or monthly? Year, year. Yearly. Yeah. Like what? What is the expectation for an entry level <coughs> position? Forty-five. Forty-five. Okay. So we will start you at forty-three thousand. Maybe that's cheap. I'm not sure what you consider cheap. But 43000 is not bad. Entry level, that is kind of the medium average salary for entry level. However, we give you the opportunity to make more within your first year. If you start with my company and you make 43000 your first year, you weren't as good as you say you were. Okay? I'm challenging you. So my expectation for you to get your first promotion happens anywhere between 9 to 12 months. That's for an average employee. How many of you in here are rock stars? Me. How many of you are above average? Still me. Come on, guys. You have to be able to be more confident in yourself. Are you all average employees or potential employees? Or are you above average? This crowd over here is being boring over here. <laughs> above average, right? Above average. Guys, we didn't come to college just to get a job to be below average or average. We came to college to be better, right? So I'm looking for that person that's going to come in my interview. You call it cocky, I call it confidence. Yeah. Sell yourself, okay? So in my interview, I'm looking for that person that's going to be successful. So average time for your first promotion would be an assistant manager position. That's about 9 to 12 months. Your pay will go up to 50000 minimum. That's what we target you at. So again, that's a $7,000 pay increase within your first year. 50000 is what we target. So the middle position here is a manager assistant. That's just a title change. It's just the minimum qualifications, you're there a day, a week, no more than a month. That's a minimum, that's kind of where you will be to get your next promotion as an assistant manager. So assistant managers, you should be an assistant manager for about six months to two years. It all depends on how average are you. Are you above average? Yeah. All of you will gonna, are gonna come out of this presentation now, above average, and go find that career. So the next promotion would be branch manager. Remember when I said this is an entrepreneur career? You are learning to run and manage your own business. As a branch manager, that's exactly what you're going to be doing. You're running and managing your own business. You're in charge of promotions from within your company. You have to train and develop your team. Okay? A good manager is a good leader, right? It's not just about me. It's about others at this point in your career. Growing your business, customer service, and profits. 
Because at the end of the day, we all want to make money, right? I don't want to work for free. I'm motivated by money. Tell me what I need to do and I will do it, right? So as a branch manager, we give you the opportunity to run and manage your own store. You are 100% responsible for everything that affects that business. It is your baby. You just have all the support to be able to help you be able to grow, okay? Branch manager, the minimum we target you that at branch manager, if you're not already making that as an assistant, is 57.5. That's the minimum, okay? So average branch manager can make about 65 to 70,000. And this is about one a year and a half after you graduated. You should be making in the 60s, right? So I made it to branch manager, and I'm above average. <coughs> I'm gonna say yeah, I'm just gonna see. Eight months I was an assistant manager. Six months later I became a branch manager, okay? If I can do it, so can you. There's nothing extraordinary that I did. All I did is I had good work ethic, I had a drive, and I was hungry. I wanted to make money. So a branch manager, you look, there's a little spider web. So as a branch manager, the opportunities can kind of open up in different departments. We have talent acquisition, which is what I do. We have HR, we have fleet, car, uh, car sales, we have fleet, we have marketing, remarketing. There's so many divisions within the company, and that's just to name a few, that we only promote from within. We will only consider our people first. So you have to excel as a manager, lead as a manager, be a great, Represent yourself very well always so other people within the division of the company can come knocking on your door and saying, hey, are you interested in X? So I was a branch manager for two and a half years before I transitioned to talent acquisition. The next promotion in the rental side, however, is this is typically more of the million dollar career path is what I like to call it, um, would be area manager. As an area manager, your goal is to get there between three to five years of being with the company. I'm sorry, three to seven years. On average, it's about five years. At that point, it is a six-figure paid position. The minimum we target you at is 100,000. That's for the area manager position. Area managers can make anywhere between 100 to 185 plus. And again, remember I, earlier I said I'm very transparent? This is it. I'm telling you exactly what you should expect. The next promotion would be group rental manager, which is this right here. It's not about a 250, $300,000 pay salary. The next promotion would be regional vice president. You're now looking at about 300 up to 1.5 million. And of course, the next position from there, you're not talking about seven figures for sure, high seven figures, okay? We only promote from within. This guy here started as a manager trainee. There's nothing different, again, that he did that you guys can't do to get there. You guys are all, I'm just you know, entry level, our, our future, right? We're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to move up. I'm looking for somebody that's going to come in and help us continue to do that. Okay? Any questions on this? Okay. So a tip yes. Have, what is your typical timeline again for branch manager? Branch manager, uh, you should be running your own store within a year and a half to two and a half years. It all depends on you. Would it be like the store you started off at, or would you kind of transfer to a different So it just depends on where you're at in your career. So the opportunities for your local store may happen, or maybe you may be willing to take that next step and come to a different store. A really cool perk of being a branch manager is you get a company car. You don't pay for gas, you don't pay for car insurance, you don't pay for maintenance, you get a brand new car every single day. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, as a talent acquisition or area manager, anything above outside of the rental side, you get an assigned company car. So every August I'll get a brand new car, like a 20, so for this August I'll get a 2019 model. So I, you get a brand new car. It's a really cool car. Your own gas car. Yeah. What's that? Can you pick it yourself or? Can I pick it myself? Yeah, like yeah. car. Yeah, they give you a list of cars that you can pick from and find what works for you. Yeah. Branch manager? A year and a half to two and a half years. It's about an average. Are you above average? A year and a half. Are you average? Two years. Below average? Two and a half, three. Hopefully not three. You're three years in with a company. You're not a branch manager. I'm a little concerned. Is that only if you start off as a management trainee? I'm sorry? Is that only if you start off as a management trainee? A hundred percent. We only promote them with it. Any other questions on this? Or um, so before that? So how many of you have rented a car with us before? Okay, a few of you, right? So a typical branch is typically what you walk into, right? You see the, the person that's greeting at the door, renting you the vehicle, 
checking you in, bye, have a fantastic day. That's the front line of the business. Um, but what you don't know is that person's really learning the back end of the business, kind of managing everything involved with running the business successfully. You have to be good at understanding your financial statement. What areas of opportunity does your branch have? What risks can you take for your branch to be more profitable, right? We're going to teach you all of that. So a typical branch runs about five to seven employees, typically has about 100 to 200 store cars. A lot of you walk into a rental car company and you're like, where are all your cars? And you're like, well, they're rented. Our goal is to rent cars, not to hold on to them and have them set outside looking pretty, right? We're not a car sales company. We do have a car sales division, but my goal is to rent cars. How many of you work in a hotel? In a hotel? Nobody? Okay, so hotel is very similar to our industry. So how many rooms do we have? The, the, the tighter we are in occupancy, the, the more money we're making, right? So we have 100 rooms and we are renting only 50 of them. We're not making money. Our goal is to rent all the rooms. So same thing with our cars. I have 150 cars, but I have them all on the road because I'm making money. When car returns, I'm going to get it on the road. That's kind of the goal. Um, you're in charge of profits and loss responsibility, employee income tied to performance. So again, you grow your business, you grow your paychecks. Very simple. Responsibility to grow your own business locally. So it's all about marketing. How many marketing majors do we have here? One. Okay. There's a lot of marketing involved in this business. You have to be able to market your brand, market yourself, to be able to be competitive and have the, have the local businesses trust you. How do we do that? but providing the best service, being loyal people to our to not just our customers, but to our accounts. Um, our accounts are like body shops, dealerships, insurance companies, those are all of our <coughs> accounts, and you're having to market to them all the time. So, another thing that I'm really, really excited about this company, how many of you care about stability? Only a few of you, that's scary, okay? We live in a very unstable market. How many of you have worked in a position or have heard of somebody after 10, 15, maybe even 20 plus years of working for a company, that employer comes to them and says, hey, you've been amazing and you do an amazing job. I just can't afford you at this point. I'm going to have to let you go. Isn't that scary? That is, that is my biggest fear. And I never, and honestly, when I was in college, I never thought about that. I never even cared. I'm like, I have a college degree. Everyone's going to want me. Um, but you don't realize the market that we're in that if, if a company shuts down, it can shut down without even a notice, without nothing, right? So how many of you are asking that in the interview process? Are you asking how many layoffs has your company had in the last 10, 15 years? Guess what, guys? Google sometimes doesn't lie, okay? Sometimes it tells you the truth. So Google things, find things out. What's a great website you can learn about the company? Read the good, the bad, and the other thing. What is it? Glassdoor. Glassdoor. Anybody else? And another one? LinkedIn, right? Networking. Glassdoor will share a lot of because it's a lot of people like me going in there and just telling speaking about my experience. It's anonymous. So you get to see somebody's terrible experience working for that specific company or someone's really great experience. And what somebody's terrible experience may not always be yours, right? So we have increased in profits every year since we started. Every year. Back in 2007, we bought the parent company, we bought National and Alamo. So did you guys know we own National and Alamo? Mm -hmm. No, well now you do. So we bought the parent company named Enterprise Holdings in 2008. So we own all three brands. Did we let go of all of their employees at National and Alamo? No, we didn't. And that is so amazing. We have people that worked for National and Alamo for 30, 40 years, and we didn't let them go. We kept them, we trained and developed them our way, um, but we still kept their business model the same. So Alamo focuses on like that Disney traveler, traveling going out of town, fa uh, family vacation or kind of traveler. National focuses on that business rental, someone that doesn't want to talk to anybody, I just want the car and I want to go. And Enterprise focuses on a lot of everything. Business, insurance, family, vacations, you just want a car for a day, we focus on it all. So. Currently, we're at $22.3 billion, and I am very proud to say we are a very stable company. We are a recession-proof industry. The fact is, people need our business. How many of you needed a car during Harvey? Probably, if not you, your mom, your dad, your uncle, somebody in Beaumont did, right? So we are pretty secure. Any questions on this? I 
was going to show a video, but I, it's just, it's on our website. It's like two minutes. If I have time, I'll go back to it, okay? Um, I have two events coming up in the next month. So March 9th, I'm hosting an office visit. I'm inviting juniors and seniors to come to our corporate, uh, our company. Um, we do provide transportation if you um, reside in the Houston area. If you are interested and you want to get to Houston, I can tell you where to meet me, and, we, and you're more than welcome to attend our event. It's open to juniors and seniors, so whatever classification you are, if you're a junior or a senior, I don't require a transcript, I just ask if you're a junior or senior, you're welcome to come. Um, lunch is provided, and fun will be provided, of course, right? Um, you're going to get a chance to meet with actual department heads within our company, get a chance to meet some, a, a manager trainee, an area manager, and all of our regional vice presidents within the company just in the Houston market. So it's a great opportunity. If you're interested, come talk to me afterwards. I'm also hosting an open house. My open house is where I'm actually inviting people to come in to do an actual interview with my hiring manager if you're interested in an internship or full-time position. So. Um, I guarantee an interview, the internship full time are, postings are open today and I have a lot of opportunity in Beaumont. I also have some part time positions like car detailer positions available as well and driver positions. So if you know anybody looking, you can tell us to come to my open house. Any questions on this? Okay. Talk to you about my company. Um, how many of you have are going through this or feel like that's kind of you. The vicious cycle. Yeah, some of us, okay. And, and it is, it's like, hey, I have a degree, I have experience, so why can't you give me a chance to show you that I'm capable of excelling your job, but you require experience, but how can I get experience if I can't, if you don't give me a chance? And that's the scary part, right? So let's talk about you guys. Transferable skills. A lot of us, how many work in retail or wait, or wait, or wait tables? About maybe half of you in here. That's sales, that's customer service, that's leadership. Those are a lot of transferable skills that transition into the workforce in any position that you're applying for. How many of you are involved in organizations, the university? That's something that no one's forcing you to attend these events. No one's forcing you to be a part of an organization. You're doing that out of your own will to better yourself. So that's your leadership, your ability. But are you challenging yourself? Are you just a member and sitting down in the crowd and attending the events so you can put it on your resume? Or are you participating and actually taking ownership of the events that are going on and owning them? That's you. Athletes, how many athletes do we have? Two, three, four, five, okay. So as an athlete, are you that player that's kind of okay just sitting on the sidelines and just waiting for your game to be called? Or are you that person that's pushing yourself every single day, challenging yourself to be successful, to be the first player? I'm not an athlete. I never was. I don't know a lot about athlete terms. But I know the competitive drive that you naturally have. It's in you. You have it. You, the work ethic. You're up at 5 in the morning to go practice and you have to go to class and you have to go practice that evening again. Your life is just consumed with this sport, right? I understand that. And there's a lot of transferable skills to athletes that you get to transition into the workforce. Start thinking about those. But challenge yourself. Don't just do the job to do the job. Do the job to be better at it and to be able to have something to talk about in the future. Give me an example of a time you were able to excel or exceed a certain goal. Give me a time, an example of a time that you helped somebody that wasn't really pulling their weight. That's talking about your leadership skills where you're able to overcome some challenges and obstacles and things like that. That's what you want to be prepared to talk about. Any questions on the transferable skills? Anything that you're doing today, you're like, hey, how can this transition into this? Anybody have a specific question? Yeah. What about doing something like volunteering? How that help? Yeah, so volunteering. It's, again, going out of your way to be a part of an event. Are you just volunteering to get the hours? Or how can you talk about this event that you volunteered for? that will help you transition into like a leadership skills, communication, customer service. How did you go above and beyond to provide the best service you could for somebody specifically? Could you give me an example in that volunteer event that you did? So that's customer service, leadership, anything else? Retail, military, waiting tables, student organizations, and football, I'm sorry, not football, sorry. Uh, the athletes, <laughs> athletics, um, things like that is 
those are some organizations and things that you are involved in today. That there's a lot of transferable skills that can transition into any industry you want. So think about what what do you want? Do you all in here in this room can tell me in five years this is exactly where I would like to see myself? You could. Some of us are not shaking our head, so we're thinking about that. When we get to our, when we're freshmen and sophomores, it's okay to not know what you want to do when you grow up. When you're seniors, you should have an idea. Still, 90% of the time, we still don't know. And we'll take that job because we just need a job. We'll get to our senior last semester year, and we just start applying everywhere. And I know because I receive a lot of applications, and when I talk to them, they really don't want to do sales. They just, they're just, they're so desperate. They need a job. So I don't want that to be you guys. I want you to start thinking about where do you see yourself in five years? Don't take a job just to take a job because then you're going to be that person, and I promise you, that will have a lot of instability on the resume. That may not affect you and hurt you today. As a college student, we, we expect that. But when you're two years out of school and you've had two or three jobs, I'm concerned about your commitment. Okay? So know what you want. What do you enjoy doing? <laughs> Are you okay working in a cubicle type setting, working in front of a, a in front of a group, um, interacting with people, or do you want to just be more behind the scenes? I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to communicate with anybody. I just want more technical. There's people that are like that, and that's okay. That's a hundred percent okay. But you have to know what you want. Growth opportunities. How many of you care for a position that offers you the opportunity to advance? I do. And I'm still 10 years into the company, and I still want to grow. I want to know that I still have room for opportunities and advancement. Philosophies for promotion. What is this company, this culture known for? Do you guys promote from within? How do you guys promote? Do you guys move outside to hire managers? It's okay. These are questions that you can ask in the interview. Training programs. Can you continue to grow and develop as an individual? Or are you doing the same job over and over and over? Stability. How many of you care about stability now? I hope all of you, and if you don't, I want you to just think about it, just a little bit. Risk, maybe you're that person that's okay taking a risk. I'll take this $100,000 job if I don't have one tomorrow. That's okay, I'll worry about today. I don't care about tomorrow. Is that you? I hope not, right? Would you take a position that offers you $43,000 today, but I'm gonna offer you $70,000? Which one would you take? I heard 70 over here. What about you guys? 70? You'll take 70? Ah, all right. Now we're asking questions. Which one's going to give me more opportunity to grow? Guess what? Five years, 70,000, you're still making 70. Guess what? Five years, 43,000, you're not making six figures. What's more appealing? Think, people think about now, 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 now. They forget about what's in it for me in five to ten years. Yes? Yeah, what's the law says, like, uh, if you're being offered a job for like 50,000, but with benefits versus jobs, 5,000 with, no, with no benefits, it's more to go for, uh, for the 50,000. Great, and I'm glad you brought up benefits. We have amazing benefits, really good benefits. And again, I'd be happy to share that with you guys if you're interested. Like what, what kind of benefits? Medical, dental, vision, 401k, profit sharing. We get a little bit of cut from the profits that the Taylor family earn. Every single employee gets a little cut on that, which is kind of cool. Work environment. Pop quiz. Ready? You guys ready for a pop quiz? Okay. The average time that a recruiter will spend reading your resume is what? Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Thirty seconds. Two seconds. Two. Thirty seconds. Now remember, the average. I've been doing this for five years. I will look at a resume in two seconds and tell you, nope, nope. Nope. I look at resumes all day long. I do cold calls. I will get on Monster, I'll get on Indeed, I'll get on Career Builder, or Career Plug, I'll get on, um, I won't look at LinkedIn as much, very rarely, um, and I will go through resumes all day long and I'm staring at resumes and I'm looking at resumes and there's things that are going to catch my attention within the first paragraph of that resume. So resumes is really important, right? What percentage of the interview is visual? D. Anybody else say anything different? So I only hire pretty people? <laughs> What's visual? 55%. So visual, visual is not just how you look, it's
is how you represent yourself. How are you sitting? Your eye contact. Are you dressed professional? If you're applying for a career, guess what, guys? I don't care what position it is. Full matching suit, 100%. If you don't know what the dress code is, if you see that people are dressed in polos, full matching suit, you can never overdress for an interview. You can underdress. Okay, so if, if you're attending an event and you notice everybody's not wearing a tie and their shirt's unbuttoned or they're wearing polos, it's easy to take off the tie, it's easy to loosen up a little bit versus having to go back home or go to the store to find a tie and get a suit, right? So dress for the job you want, not the one you have. You want to make sure that you're sitting up straight, you're, you're making eye contact, you're engaged, you're smiling. When you're in the lobby and you're waiting for that person to come and call you, are you just staring at your phone and looking at your phone? It's real easy to do that, right? As soon as you sit down and you know nobody around there, you don't know anybody, what do you do? Smile and wait. Smile and wait. But what do you really do? You get on your phone. It's, it's a habit. Most of us do it. I'm guilty. Many times it's what you don't say, body language, dress, posture, is more important than what you are saying. If somebody shows up not professionally dressed, I will take business casual. I will give them a pass. But then I'm going to coach them and tell them, I need you to do this for the next interview. But if you don't even do that, I promise you my interview will not last long, long with you because you didn't take it serious. Resumes. So a lot of us are focused on the resume, and I will tell you that the resume is, the, is kind of your key to a company. We don't get a chance to talk to you. We don't get a chance to see you. We don't get a chance to interact with you at all or anything, right? So you're selling yourself on this piece of paper. Seniors, if you're in your last semester, you probably have posted your resume to probably 20 different sites, 20 different companies, you're just hoping to get a call. Hopefully that's not you, but that will be you eventually once you graduate and you still don't have a career, right? So how does your resume transition into the career and industry you're interested in? So let's assume, again, I'm interested in sales, but all I've been doing is working as an assistant, behind the scenes, not interacting with anybody. I really can't sell myself and express my interest in sales because I have zero sales on my resume. But I'm involved in organizations. I'm a leader, I'm a president of an organization, I'm in sports, I participate, I do a lot of community service events. So now that is what's going to sell me on your resume. Maybe you have your experience and it's smaller, but your resume and your skills and your activities and all of that is what's going to sell me because it's a little bit larger on your resume. Should your resume be more than a page? No. No. If my RVP and my VP, my GM of my company, can still put his and her resume on one page, so should you. You are all recent college graduates, graduates right? You shouldn't have two pages worth of information on your resume. If you do, I'm concerned. Why do you think I'd be concerned? Done too much. Done too much. Can't, can't stick to one thing and really excel at that one thing. It's just job hopping, involved in so many things, really hit their they're a master of none, right? So you want to be able to express yourself and be able to really be specific. Bullet points on your resume so you can have an opportunity to talk about your resume in the interview. I don't want an essay. I really don't want to read a resume. If I see a resume that looks like an essay, I will not even look at it. I can't. I don't want to read. I did a lot of reading in college. Don't want to read anymore. So I want something that's going to grab my attention. The first thing on your resume should be your contact information, right? Second thing on your resume should be your education. That is your biggest accomplishment. That should be the first thing on your resume because you want everybody to know that you have a college degree. If you're about to graduate, put expected graduation date X, right? Then the next thing should be your experience. Sophomores, freshmen, you guys have the opportunity to be able to build that experience. If you don't love what you do today, if you hate talking to customers, if you hate having to offer products to counter to make an upsell, then retail and sales is not for you. Let's find something that is. If you love interacting with people, you want to be that person that's in the front line, you want to do what I do, right? Who wants to be a recruiter? A lot of people want to be recruiters, right? So what are you doing that's going to help you advance and excel in that role? Start taking positions that will help you do that. If you're a shy person, I was really shy. Believe it or not, I was very shy. Um, but I started working as a waitress. And it really helped me. I remember going up to a table of four business executive men. I'm like, oh my god, it's 
so nerve wracking. But it became very natural for me. I'm like, these are these guys are just guys. They're just they're just boys, right? So I wasn't nervous anymore. So it made it easy for me to go up to the table and talk to people and challenge myself and approach them, offer them products and services when they're coming to eat at my restaurant, right? Things like that. My section was my business. My regulars were my customers. I worked on tips and I wanted to make money. I'm always, I'm motivated by money, I'm sorry. You know, I wanna make money. So I, I, I kind of worked my business. So that's how I'm gonna sell myself experience and leadership all on one page. If you need help with your resume, please take advantage of all the resources you have. You have the Career Center right here. They're there for you guys, and it's free. Not a lot of people have that <coughs> privilege. Take advantage of the resources that you have, okay? Know the company, when you're getting ready for the interview, please make sure to do the research. I will tell you, probably half the people that I interview have zero clue of what they're interviewing for, they don't know what the position's about. If I ask them, so tell me why enterprise? Oh, I work with you guys all the time and you guys provide the best service. Well, that's great. I'm curious to know what you read. What did you research about my company? What do you know about my company? What can you tell me? Why do you want to work here? I love your values. Can you talk to me about two or three values that stood out to you and this is why you want to work for this company? Can you talk about the, the structure? I love how you guys promote from within and you give you the, the people the opportunity to grow and advance within their own, within their own career. You teach people how to run a business, and I've always had the entrepreneurial mindset, and I really want to be successful at doing that. If you're able to sell me on that and show me that you did your research, that's a check. Now I'm going to go into behavioral interviewing, right? So another company, make sure you do your research. You all said Glassdoor. That is one of the best websites you can go in and read the good, the bad, and the ugly. It tells you everything, right? But don't just depend on Glassdoor. Go into Google. Go into the website. Reach out to people on LinkedIn that worked for the company or have worked or, st or still work today because they can tell you a little bit of their personal insight. At Enterprise, guess what? We have close to 200 locations. Here in Beaumont, I think we have eight or nine stores. You guys can go into a store and ask the people there. Hey, you know, Sandy came and talked to us at our school. I'm just curious to know, can you tell me a little bit more about your personal experience? Um, and that's something I strongly encourage you to do. I welcome it. The dress affects others' perception of you. Take it serious, right? So would you, we all understand the difference between casual and business casual and business professional, right? Yes? So what's business casual? Slacks, button down. So if I take off my jacket, I'm business casual. Putting on my jacket really just makes me business professional. It's that simple for girls. Guys, tie. Dress socks. These were dress socks. <laughs> dress shoes. Um, I, I, it's a thing now. No socks. Uh, please wear socks. Okay. That's my personal preference. <laughs> Business professional. Ladies, a dress matching suit is fine. A skirt matching suit is fine. A pants suit is fine. Okay. Guys, there's only one one type of dress for you guys. Unless you. I mean, I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> interviews. All right. There's different types of interviews that you should be prepared for when you start applying for different companies. There's phone interviews, one-on-ones, groups, panels, and technical. Do we all understand the difference between all of them? Or does anybody want me to explain any? Does anybody want me to explain them all? What's technical? Technical. So a lot of employers, um, since we get a lot of applications that come in, a lot of employers, for example, everybody wants to work for oil and gas, right? It sounds appealing. So oil and gas will get like a thousand applications. So they have a technical interview first. They give you a test. It's a skills evaluation test. It's either a personality test or it's a mathematical test. It's an Excel test. Whatever the test is for that specific trait is what you're going to do first. You pass that. If you don't, it eliminates a lot of applicants in the process and it allows us as recruiters to interview specific people only that we want that pass that test. So if we're prepared for that, that's a technical. Phone interview. Phone interview, I'm going to say, is probably the easiest way for me to eliminate 9 out of 10 people in a heartbeat. Why? You know what people fail to do in phone interviews? What? Introduce themselves. So how many of you have had a phone interview before? A few of you? Okay. When you did the phone interview, 
and it was scheduled, right? Okay. They told you what time, they told you what time they were going to be calling you. How did you prepare yourself for that interview? Anything extra that you did? You went about your day. Oh, I'm going to get a call around like 10. Okay, you're driving. <laughs> you're at home, dog barking, baby crying, mom yelling in the background. You laugh. I heard it all. Okay? These are college graduates that are in that, doing that phone interview. Some of them are 30, 40 year business professionals and they still don't know how to do a phone interview. And I do give them, they haven't been in, they haven't been in a presentation like this to be able to kind of set them up for success. If you are scheduled for a phone interview, do this. Dress for the part. How many of you have worn a suit on a daily basis? None of you, okay. How many of you have worn a suit once in their life? What does it do to you? Boost your ego, right? I remember putting on my suit for the first time. I thought it was powerful. I, I felt like all eyes were on me because I was wearing a suit. I just looked the part, right? So when you put, when you dress the part, you act the part. So that helps. Second thing is I want you to make sure to lock yourself in a room. The university can provide rooms for you guys so you, so you can sit in for the interview. Four walls, zero distraction. You pretend that person is sitting in front of you and they are having a conversation with you. So when you're in that interview, that phone interview, you're smiling, you're engaged, you're dressed the part, you're prepared to answer why you want to work there, what makes you the best candidate for this position. All of these things, a phone interview is an easy way to eliminate candidates and you do not want that to be you. Okay? Take it serious. Pretend that person is sitting in front of you and I promise you it will really help you. Do a lot of research about the company, talk about why they're an amazing company, and sell yourself on why they would regret not considering you for that position. So phone interview is really important. Group interviews, sometimes there'll be four or five potential candidates for that one job doing a group interview with several people. So now you have to really set yourself apart against everybody else. Panel, we all know what panel interviews are, right? Five, ten people. I'm going to say five people interviewing just you. If you're doing a panel interview, make, if, that, if there's that one person that keeps asking you questions, don't focus your answer specifically on that one person. Talk to the room. Eye contact to the room. Answer the question and, and, and answer the question to the room. Okay? You don't want to just focus all your attention on that one person. And sometimes they'll do that on purpose. They'll have like two people sitting there just to see how you interact with because you assume that person never asked me questions, they may not be important. Don't do that. Any questions on the interview? Practice, I'm gonna go through these fast. Arrive early, what's early? 15 minutes early. 15 minutes early. Please do not arrive 30 minutes early. Please do not arrive an hour early. Please do not arrive three hours early. I've had that before. 15 minutes on time. No, not a minute later, not a minute earlier. If you're coming from Beaumont, your interview's in Houston, and you want to drive four hours early because you're afraid you're going to get stuck in traffic, sit in your car, relax, take a deep breath, listen to music, do more research. Bring copies of your resume, at least two or three copies. Make great eye contact, great eye contact. Avoid staring at the wall behind them because you're nervous. Avoid looking down or trying to think of the question and look around and then answer the question and not really look at them because we lose interest real quick. Remember to smile, okay? We're not robots. We want to get a chance to meet you, so be yourself. That's 100% <coughs> everything I can say is be yourself and have fun. Firm handshake. If you want to shake your hand afterwards, I will tell you if it's weak or not, if you want, if you want me to, okay? So come up to me afterwards, shake my hand, just say hi. Breathe, I'll say it's weak, you need more practice, or I'll tell you it's great. I promise you, I'll tell you the truth if you want to know. Um, a lot of these things that I share with you guys today, just so you know, so I've been doing this for five years, and I love being the best at what I do. I love, I love being able to challenge myself and to, be, and to learn and to be better. So, a lot, of universe, a lot of events that we do is career fairs, right? Before the career fair, guess what we do? We get to put our stuff down and we get to network around our other competition, our competition, right? I get to talk to other people. I said, hey, what do you look for? What kind of questions do you ask? How's your interview process? What do you guys think of Lamar students? We talk, right? 
So at, at another university, we have a university board where all of the employers come and we get to tell them what we like, what we don't like. We get to listen to all the things that are going on. And at that time, I'm also networking. I'm picking people's brains. So these are things that I not just see myself, but other people have mentioned as well. So if it's not for enterprise, it'll be for somebody else, I promise. And be positive. So what I'm going to focus on the positive real quick. So when somebody tells you, hey, why do you want to leave your employer? What is the first thing we think about answering? How do we answer that question? How? Negatively. Negatively. It happens all the time. Not all the time. Most of the time. Oh, my God. The managers were terrible. And it was so unorganized. I mean, you, it was just it was the worst experience ever. Oh, okay, great. So how bad were the managers? Were they really bad? Like, were they mean? Yeah, oh my God, yes. Okay, great. Trust me, I will start feeding into that. And I will get you to start saying, and you'll start opening up. I'll make you feel so comfortable, and you are not going to get selected for this position. <laughs> so focus on the positive. Um, recruiters will do that. People will do that. They will make you feel extremely comfortable because that's our job. We want to get a chance to know you. We want you to have word vomit, right? And we're going to get that out of you. So, hey, all, this company was an amazing company. It was a great job, but that's what it was. It was a job. I learned so much from it, but I really didn't have the opportunity to grow and advance. I didn't have the opportunity to move up. Basically, my manager had to either retire, quit, or get fired for me to be considered for that position. However, I've learned so much on my leadership abilities, my customer service, my abilities to excel in sales. It's been an amazing company over my last four years in college. It's a great answer. Awesome. Let's move forward, right? Focus on the positive. Listen. So sometimes we, have, we already kind of done so much research that we know what kind of questions coming up next that we cut the recruiter off or the person who's interviewing you and you answer the question without even them, allowing them to finish. Or you assume you heard something and then you start talking about something else and you're like, oh wait, wait, I'm sorry, so what was the question again? Again, it happens all the time, right? So listen, don't go on the right way, don't talk too much, don't chew gum, if you chew gum, if you're gonna spit it out, swallow it, I'm sorry, that's my advice. Don't use inappropriate language. Don't bring cell phones. You will all survive without your cell phones for an hour or two. I promise. Leave them in your car. Because remember, what's the habit we have when we sit down in the lobby and nobody's around to say hi to us or talk to us? <coughs> it's a habit. Leave it in your car. It will keep. It'll make you engage. I promise you. You'll you'll smile at the wall. I don't care. Smile. <laughs> True, I promise you, just smile, and somebody that passes by be like, hey, how are you? You know, you want to be able to show that you're approachable and you're friendly. Don't assume anybody's unimportant. How many of you know what behavioral interviewing is all about? I'm sorry, I'm going over. I can go fast, I promise. Behavioral interviewing. What's behavioral interviewing? Do you all know what behavioral interviewing is? Great. Okay, behavioral interviewing is past performance predicts future performance. So, if you are interviewing for a, a company, majority of the companies today are talking about doing behavioral interviewing. Probably nine out of ten companies do behavioral interviewing. The best way to answer behavioral interviewing is by focusing on what we call the STAR method, right? Think about the situation, the task, the action, and the result. This will allow you not to over talk, not to talk in circles before you get to your point. The biggest one of all when you're asking, so behavioral interviewing is, for example, give me an example of a time you provided exceptional customer service. Can you give me an example of a time you persuaded somebody to go with a product, service, or an idea? Okay, and now you're going to be able to talk about your background as an athlete. You're going to be able to say, yeah, you know, I can tell you about customer service, how I went above and beyond. I had a teammate who was um, not performing. He wasn't excelling. He was, at the, he was always being benched. So I took the time to be able to set some practice on the side, and I worked with him, and I practiced him every day. You know, practice was over at eight, we would stay till nine, just him and I. You know, I wanted him to play, and I really wanted him to excel. Eventually, he ended up starting, and he is the lead player of our team. He's doing fantastic, he's a senior now, and I'm really, really proud of him. I mean, as an athlete, that's a very simple behavioral question, right? We talked about the situation was he was an athlete. The action is you took the athlete wasn't performing, and you took the time to be able to coach him. 
the result, the, well, the result was he excelled in his job, right? So think about the things that you do today and how you're able to talk about those scenarios, okay? Challenge yourselves. Any questions on the behavioral question? Behavioral interviewing. Okay. How far would it go back? Questions, if you have questions at the end of the interview, please make sure that they are related to the job and the company and not asking about time off, vacation, <coughs> things like that, right? As salespeople and as recent college grads, the biggest thing and the biggest advice I'm going to give you guys when you're in that interview, don't forget to close the deal. As salespeople, we have to close the sale, right? But when you're interviewing, even if you're not applying for a sales job, you still have to sell yourself. You still have to know how to sell. And you have to be able to close the deal. You, you remind them on why you're the best candidate for this position. You remind them on why they would regret not considering you for the position. And you possibly ask them, hey, is there anything that will keep you from giving me the opportunity to work for your company? That may allow the employer or the, or the recruiter to tell you, yeah, you know what, actually, I do have a couple concerns. Let me walk those concerns with you and you tell me and again, sell me on why you think you're going to be the best fit for this position. Close is extremely important. Follow up email if you are interested. This is my website, but this is my information. That's my email address and that's my phone number. If you have any questions, um, the one thing I do want to let you guys know is my commitment is to help, the, help you guys excel. Even, even if it's not with my company, if you want to share your resume with me and you want me to say, hey, Sandy, this is good, I'll be happy to give you some insight and some pointers on how to better to make your resume seem more appealing. If you want to, I'll be happy to do that. The moment you apply, my pointers stop. Once you're an applicant, I can't give you, I can't share the good, the bad, and the ugly with you anymore. I'm not going to do all of that. I will in the interview, but I'm not going to prep you for the interview. Okay? So that's something that I expect you to do already. However, before you apply, I'll, I'll share all the secrets. I'll tell you what kind of questions I ask in the interview. I'll give you the answers to the test. Because I promise you, sometimes it still doesn't help. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate all of you being here. Um, any last minute questions for me? Yes? Uh, you said that there were five to seven people <coughs> to each um, branch. branch. Um, does this job require you to uh, transport or travel? No, 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 no. So you won't have to trans uh, move or commute to a different location. Real quick, um, I had a sign-in sheet going around. If you could please fill out your name and your email address on there, that would be great. I will follow up with you and send you some more information, but I'll also share that with her so she can give you guys credit if you 